Hi everyone, it's Luke from Cocos. In the past three videos, we learned how to use WebGL and build some triangles, combining them to make rectangles, and the different variations on replacing vertex data. But all these drawings are based on drawings with base elements. If you want to make the context, content look more realistic, there is a need for more vertices or a lot of colors. Therefore, you can add more details to the object by adding a texture. A texture applications involve a very important technology, texture mapping. Texture mapping is a mapping of a picture to the surface of a geometric figure. We can imagine a rectangle shape drawn on a whiteboard. By adding an image to the whiteboard, the rectangle becomes the canvas of the image. At the same time, we can call this image of the object surface as an image texture or texture. Well, let's take a look at the texture map. The function of the texture mapping is applied to each element after rasterization according to the texture image. Pixels of the composition of the texture image, also known as a texture. Each color can be encoded with RGB or RGBA formats. Texture map has a very important part to know with texture coordinates. In order to map a texture to the object, we need to specify which part of each vertices of the object. The textures used are more than just 2D textures. The texture coordinates also have similar re representations like X and Y, usually called the UV coordinates. U, the corresponding horizontal direction, and V corresponds to the vertical direction. If it's a 3D texture, the third direction is W. They are between 0 and 1. Texture coordinate stats starts at 0, 0 with the lower left corner of the texture, and 1, 1 is the point of the top right corner of the texture. This method of using texture coordinates to obtain texture color is called sampling. Each vertex will associate a texture coordinate, and used to indicate which part of the texture to start sampling from. If you using, want to use this image on the chart to map exactly to the rectangle, its texture coordinate is usually set. The principle of mapping is mainly to map the vertices of the texture image for, to the four vertices of the WebGL coordinate system. If we set the texture coordinate range more than 0 to 1, then what do we point to? Next, look at the surrounding method of texture. The default behavior of the wrapping method of the WebGL is to repeat this texture. Of course, it also provides several options. The first is repeat. This is the default method of surrounding a texture in WebGL and will repeat the texture image drawing. Uh, the second is mirrored repeat. Well, and that's the same as repeat, only each repeated picture is mirrored. The last one is clamp to edge. Exceeding part will repeat the edge of the texture coordinate to generate an edge to be stretched. Its setup method is shown as in this figure. This can be done by the means of the GL text parameter, different axial settings for coordinates. So let's take a look at GL texture wrap. 2D textures ST corresponds with UV and 3D textures SDR correspond with UVW. This is a little more important here. The repeat mode of the WebGL1 requires the texture image size. Width and height need to be two integers. For example, 32 by 32 or 512 by 512. Otherwise, it will run with a warning that it's not an integer power of two. WebGL has no such restrictions. Next, let's take a look at the last point of knowledge, texture filtration of the texture map. Texture coordinates does not depend on the resolution and can be any floating point value, so WebGL knows how to map the textures to the texture coordinate. But if there is a small texture that needs to be mapped to a large object, it may cause the multi-pixels to map them on the same pattern instead of a single pixel may be mapped to multiple stripe elements. Texture filtering is to solve the problem of texture sample calculations when inconsistent. The main thing is the two methods. The first is nearest near filtration. The sampling method will directly select the pixel closest to the texture's coordinate. It also is the simplest uh, texture filtering method. It's highly efficient. The second is linear filtration of linear. This sampling method selects the most recent four texture pixel weights around the center point. The closer the center of one textural pixel is to the textural coordinate, so the textural picture color coordinates to the final sample color. Uh, we can take a look at this picture. Uh, I mapped this figure into f two large rectangular areas. As you can see by the figure, there's obviously some zigzags in the picture from the adjacent filtration. For example, the part of the eyelid in the images with linear filtering is smoother. Linear filtering can produce a more realistic output, but if you want to develop a pixel-style game, it's usually use a proximity filtering option. When we enlarge or shrink an image, we can choose different filtering options. For example, using fil neighboring filtration to get the highest efficiency when it is reduced, but when zoomed, selecting linear filtration to achieve a better performance.
Texture filtration is similar to the texture surround mode. This interface is also used. A used GL texture min filter is specifies a picture shortening filtering. You can also select GL texture mag filter to specify linear filtration when the image is magnified. Then we try to associate the texture coordinates to the rectangle of the previous video. Let's load the image of resource first. Materials that need to be ready before this. Uh, I have prepared uh, two examples. One is logo.png and one is closeicon.png. So here, let's load uh, logo.png. We can perform rendering instructions because the image is loaded, but the image process of a picture is asynchronous. So I will change the part of the rendering to the render function. Then I'd redefine the main function outside of this. This part is only responsible for loading image resources. Specify an image load path. The notification image is completed after completing the, comp uh, the completion of the specified function. And the render function is called inside the function to simultaneously transmit it to the image resource. The render function must have a place to do it. After the definition is completed, next we can handle the part of the 2D image and the UV in the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So first, define the vertex index properties. Uh, define the vertex shader output. and define a 2D image uniform. Then let the image combine UV. Lastly, let's stack the colors. And next, let's add the UV information. The UV is a floating point, so it's the same as a floating 32 array buffer in the same way as position. So, I'll start with the original comment here. I change the name to vertex pause UV. This lower left corner of the UV coordinate corresponds to the lower left corner of the rectangle. So this is the left right corner because I hope the entire texture is posted on this video on this rectangular. So I choose the maximum value of the optional range. Then all positions are written as um, uh, vertex pause UV. Okay, UV is done. Here you still need to define it. So Okay, it looks like no problem. Finally, we create an image cache. Then bound it, the current image, sorry, bound the current image, set texture. If you're not modified as default, you can also be set, you can also set it here. Then set the filtration of the texture. Okay, then we upload the texture image. Okay, let's take a look at the parameters. It supports these interfaces with the optional parameters. Because we loaded a HTML image element resource, uh, so I chose the third interface. 
Uh, let's take a look at the first one. The first one is a binding object that specifies texture. Because we are using a 2D texture, we use t texture 2D. If it is a 3D texture, you can use texture cube map to add a designated surface. The second parameter is the multi-level grade level. Because we haven't learned this, I'm going to use the default value of zero. The third is the color in the specified texture. As shown in the figure, because my picture has a transparent channel, I choose RGBA format here. Further down is the data format for the specified stripe. In WebGL1, it must be the same as the internal format. And WebGL2 has other combinations. The next is the data type of the specified edemic data. Uh, it is the data type corresponding to the data format. I'm not compressing any of the channels here, so I'm going to choose unsigned underscore byte. Uh, the last one is the texture image. Um, some developers may have a questions, like why a 2D a texture is a uniform but does not have a gl.uniform related API assigned to it. Well, because the texture is assigned a de default texture position to the texture, it's called a texture unit. And the default activation of the texture unit is zero, so I didn't perform any position value allocation before. Texture maps automatically binds to the default texture unit. Of course, we can also set the multiple textures to the frame shader via gl.uniform, but just activating the corresponding texture unit. Uh, universally, devices support eight texture units, and modern high-end equipment support more, so you'll have to test for how many. They are numbered gl.texture0 to gl.texture8. This number makes it easier to loop through the texture cells. So now, let's go ahead and run this. The error is reported in the vertex shader. Hmm. Oh, here should be a, a U underscore UV. Okay, let's take a look. At this time, we pr it prompts us when we upload the texture image. It's a problem we can we can, can copy and retrieve it. So. Uh, there are many results when searching. In fact, the main problem is that we are across domain when loading texture images. This is because our HTML, our HTML file was dragged into the browser. You can see that it started with the file protocol. The normal page starts with HTTP or HTTPS. The file protocol is more about treating HTML files parsed as a local resource access request. It is a pure local file. So the image tag SRC points to a URL of the image. Browsers restrict cross-origin HTTP requests within the script for security reasons, so we get cross-domain issues. This specific error message can be searched to learn more about the issue. Uh, since this part is taken care of for you in Cocos Creator, we won't go into too much detail. In order to solve cross-domain problems, a local server is required to be established. The local server created the HTTP server library using NPM. If you run npm install http uh, dash server dash g global installation by the current project folder, then it will perform the http server generation URL. Uh, some developers run the prompt without http dash server instructions after the installation is complete. It is possible because your node environments are not configured, but this time the temporary approach is to install http dash server on the local project. http dash server is still implemented. So do not bring up dash G this time. Uh, since I've already installed it globally, I'll demonstrate a local installation here. Then we enter the generated URL directly on your browser. And you can see the structure of the entire project. At this time, the SRC of the image is changed to a link with a domain name. Then run the HTML file again. At this time, you can see that the image is successfully loaded and there is no cross-domain error. From the drawing content, you can see that the image is upside down. This is because the picture itself has coordinates, and the coordinates of the image generally follow the reading pattern. In other words, when we read an article, we usually start from the top left corner and then increments from the top to right x and then to the left right x. 
At this time, uh, it's inconsistent with the origin of the coordinates of the texture coordinates. So it has caused a horizontal flip. Therefore, we can use the API of the WebGL flip Y axis to turn an image back. Then run it again. Now you can see that the image is drawn correctly. Since the draw, since drawing an image is successful, we can draw try to draw a textured image. I'll load the close icon image uh, that I prepared earlier. In this case, it's not an image object, but a data list. Also, there are multiple images here, so add an S. It has to be increased here on the fragment shader. Uh, we change the name to U underscore image zero. Second called U underscore image one. It is convenient for us to get its location and then deal with it. Finally, let's let these two images blend. Now we will look at the effect in a while, so I'll take this part of the color here. The correct approach is definitely to delete all color related items, but we'll look at the effect first, so don't delete it yet. Finally, we use a loop to upload the textured images. Now we're going to judge the texture image is greater than zero to perform a flip operation. Next, specify the textured unit for the image. Get their uni uh, uniform index position. Uh, specify the value of the current texture cell. So uh, first use number zero textured unit and then use number one textured unit. At this time, you'll need to activate the texture units manually. And uh, this is because the width of the textured image is less than the height. Therefore, the next modification of the position of the vertex makes the width of the rectangular shape of the configuration. Here, I've allowed the rectangular aspect ratio and the aspect ratio of the texture image, so the rendered image performance will still be zoomed. So let's take a look. Oh, there is an error. Uh, let's modify the error report. This is because I wrote it wrong here. All right, then there is a problem here. OK, let's run it again. OK, it ran successfully. From the figure, you can see that it successfully mapped two textured images into a rectangle. After the textured image is uploaded, then we will apply the color components. The 
there may be questions why this picture is not applied to the top color. And this is because the picture itself is transparent. Uh, therefore, it cannot be treated by simple texture and color additions and subtraction. I need to enable mixed mode. The blending modes will be explained later in an extended video. Uh, the application of textured image is complete. The final edition instructions will be shared later. Uh, that is why the prefix of the variable in GLSL is A underscore U underscore and V underscore. This is a naming convention, but it's not mandatory. Just this to help us to be more clear. For example, A underscore is pointing to the vertex input attribute and represents data from the vertex buffer, while U underscore is similar to the global variable, uniform can be set directly to the shader, and V underscore represents the variable varying is interpolled from the vertex shader. But that's it for this video. We'll share more in the next one. Have a great day.